install first is uh, the mount bracket. But it's very simple. Um, and what's nice about it is it stays flush with the bottom of the frame, so you're not going to have crap, you know, digging in as you're wanting to discontinue as a as a mudder on the off season from plowing. So this is uh, three bolts each side. It'll go up into the frame, and then you can see like these points here actually connect to that hole in the frame here, and then these two are already pre-drilled, so no drilling. Uh, so like here we've got the plow springs, which unfortunately, even being can they're not quite uh, the same yellow, but um, I don't know, they'll, they'll do. Uh, of course, we're in the Alpine Flex snow plow. Mentioned this kind of short you know, video previous. Um, so what we have to do for this is install the blade real fast. And the net back is pretty straightforward. Got nice recessed steel bushings and everything. Um, it also came with float runner as well. So if you want to keep up off the, the ground and the gravel, you got the floats as well, which is nice. Then can't stick around here. Then back here, uh, sells us in three different pieces. Um, you buy a frame, then you choose which plow width you want, and then you choose the, the mount. Uh, we went with a 72 inch, which is the bigger of the of the um, Alpine Flex plows. Uh, one thing I did like about the Flex plow is the main mount point is actually reversed to your normal plow. All well, the pressure is put down on the top of the plow, which helps it dig in. As opposed to if it was on the bottom, you know, they can have a tendency to kind of push over top of the snow. So the way these are designed is to help keep down force on the plow. Throw this out in front and kind of get an idea of what's going on here. How this will work. Of course, I got to go over that box as well. So, once the plow is all done, the only thing we got to do to hook up is you step, you just put your foot right on here, and uh, it unlocks from these pins from the mount. So, you drive over it hook your winch up to this cross member bar that we're going to put in here and when you start to draw it up it actually lifts this portion first snaps into the frame and then you're fitting you're good to go so another nice little setup with the with the uh, alpine flex you know not a whole lot left on the plow that we need to keep here around um, they also added a winch saver kit which i haven't really looked too far into um, it's a magnet setup that for that when this point touches this point here on the machine, it'll send a switch to tell this to turn off. Um, apparently it's all pre-wired very nicely and it's got to find out how we tap into the actual um, system floor. Looks like we've got a relay, some tabs, there's a magnetic pickup there, and of course the magnet for the plow. That'll come later. I don't uh, foresee having any issues of overrunning the, the winch. So then we also got to swap this out. I don't know. I mean, I really like the super winch, but as you can see, it's getting torn up and it's actually eaten into our, our rope. So we'll probably leave this on year round because it, from, even from pulling from the side or heavy, you know, down or up or any which way we'll be protected. So a little bit beefier, but uh, I think it'll be all right. Oh, I got it. So then this is going to be up here. Here. Yep. Let's start the loser. Ass weight. So yeah, it looks like it goes in there, and here's all the clippy dealies, and then the big rubber mounts go down to the. The knee bone connected to the neck bone. More to this than I thought. Want the old timer? Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
And this is the cross member that the rope, the rope hooks to. It's going to go here, and it's got a little rub plate, or whatever you want to call it, so the rope can flow through there without tearing it apart. Nice and soft, whatever. That's going to go here. Feels like Christmas, don't it? Yeah. Listen, that's gonna go in there somehow. instructions away. No, God no, they just put a thing in there telling you to go to the website. The only package that was with the actual Suki's there, and there's got to be nine, I'm guessing. These are all the fucking shims. Nine? Yeah. All right, let me get you. Out. through. Mm -hmm. That looks like it's 10 millimeter stuff. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. 13. I'll get some more. Alright. Okay, so. Shit. I didn't know we had to bring our rivet gun. Rivet gun? Yeah. <laughs> There's rivets? Rivets. Probably for this. Oh. Uh, yep. Yeah. We didn't even install that. Bullshit. That's going to wear it. Oh, you know what? You might not want to because it's going to collect bullshit. That's what I was thinking, yeah. Now that you bring it up. That's where they want you to ride away. They give you the wear guard like it's going to do something, but. All it's going to do is rock. So look. We already got extra parts. What's this one? That's a good question. You probably have to look in the, uh, see if it's sitting. Oh, it's a shim plate pack for the thing. Is it? No. 
whole thing. I don't even see it on the... What in the Lord's name? Right here. Yeah, that one I'm not seeing. These four bolts are for this. And we're going to want them to the farthest one. Front. For the defender, because we got the high rise. So just for your guys' info, for the XMR, because we got the higher mount uh, winch, we have to go to the first. Yeah, it's two bolts all the way to the first. I don't know. Let me see. The, I think it curls back towards the frame. Yeah, it goes back this way. So we're gonna want it oh, like this. Dang, I need some ammo wrenches too. Ain't no riches to you, ain't no riches to you, ain't you crazy. Yep. Good old B.R.P. Did I ever mention how I hate fixing cars and working on shit? Yep. We, that's why we do it for our fans. So that they can do it in an easier way than us. Alright, so here's the. Now we put the pretty inward? Who we'll puts the pretty inward? <laughs> oh, I didn't want to catch on any rope. Oh, that's that a is. good idea. See? That's why we work together as a team here. At, uh, when they ride out and right? rush down there, you're going to have to access them and you can cut the head off. Oh, Easier to so. take this freaking sweatshirt off, I think. Get your head away from the heater and share some of the well. <laughs> Go over here. That's far too warm for me. Oh. Yeah, that's going to go up. We're going to avoid your warranty because you're going to put the wear bar on. Whatever this is. It's like, I don't... It doesn't... It don't even match it. looks like wires might have to come through it, like a cover plate. Oh. Maybe bolts. for that whole narrowly up here. Right here. Like it bolts up down here. Yep. Oh, no. yeah. Nope, they're a little off. Yeah, like a rope guy or something? That, that one's got me baffled, eh? Alright. So we'll put it in front of the heater, that way we can shape it to anything we want. <laughs> So now we got to flip her over, flip her over in the throw. Now these were the last two bolts that were involved in whatever you had from the snowplow, right? Because yes. the other ones should right be in another. Yep. Yeah, those are the bottom ones. That's all that assembly. Dumb shit. Yeah, there isn't really a whole lot to it, is there? Yeah, these go, look, right through here. Yeah. Which is pretty freaking straightforward, and then these get popped up right into here, rubber to rubber. So if you got one of the other ones, these ones have. Why do these ones? Oh, because they're supposed to get it up and on that one. No, this has metal to metal on the outside, whereas the other one they were going onto the uh, putting pressure onto the pushing. Which way you still? Eh, same thing. Not on the inside. Some people use an alignment pin. When you're good, you're good. <laughs>
So just real quick guys, so I can kind of show you how this whole thing works here. Um, let me get back here. So plow mount, you got one bolt goes through the frame, which is nice because they left these holes open uh, in the skid plate for us to fasten. So that's real nice. And then the other ones literally just go over the frame to that tie there. So real easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So in about a couple minutes here, we're gonna be hooking up the plow. Yeah. So the mount went great underneath. Uh, probably one of the simplest connections to the vehicle I've ever come across so far. What uh, shim? Oh, this shim we gotta fix. Yeah, the bushing came out, probably the plastic on the plow in this shock. Oh. Came out of there. I'm oh, guessing. Yeah. I bet you. Did it come out of mine or when I pounded this one through? 
Uh, yep, came out of mine. Right here. That ain't, Ow! That ain't worth shit. Well, they're not really pressed in. They're just. Oh look, they didn't even take the. Uh, take the. Uh, yeah, they leave that on there so it doesn't get screwed up until after you. I've Ooh, seen that on other cars. Can I pull it off? Yeah, it's time. Oh, it's time to let it shine, man. Pulling the transfer tape. Oh, they didn't even. They didn't work the bubbles out of this one. <laughs> well, I thought we almost flipped it. <laughs> Kind of disappointed in their sticker application. Oh, yeah, they don't get too crazy. It's probably some machine. I need a little tiny pin. Okay. It might be a razor blade right up. Looking on that bench, there's so much crap. You tighten this up, that looks tight. Tight like a turtle. That's tight. This is all the way down. Yeah, I'd say so. Here's an extra washer because it doesn't fit on there. For the, okay, yep. for the left. Okay, so. Alright, throw all our parts here. Pieces, parts, tools. So now we're back into territory that uh, we've never been able to explore before. Because it's never been able to make it. Now, guys. Okay, so this is the ones back out of the super winch. Yep. So this is kind of where we were talking about, guys. Uh, we still. No. Nope. What we can do, ease of ooh, the phone. We'll cut some of this out of here. All right, so. Since we've got the nice remote, make this whole job a lot easier. So, guys, what we do, send power, push this out. So, the red one up there is good. And then this comes back up on itself. Alright, so then. What we want to do from this point is we get the vehicle up and lined up above the pins. Now, if you want to, uh, if you uh, want to come and get a few of this coming up. I want to do shit. So as you can see, this very nicely is the other side right in there. What? All right, so once we get it hooked up, guys, and get it lined up, then it should be able just to actu or actuate the winch. And just snap her in. That's it. Right down there. Look how high up that is. I don't think I'm ever going to over it. I don't know, maybe in another video, guys, I'll... I'll get into the, the magnet stop, but I'm not really sure if I'm going to use it because this actually has rubber stops on it too. And you can see how high up you can actually you can take the plow before it even hits the rubbers. And I mean, so you got just enough clearance. Clearance is the bottom of the machine. So if you got to make it over a stump oh, yeah. or a, a snow Very good point. pile of snow. Very happy, but very pleased. Oh, guys, let me get some snow. There's a little bit of weight on the front end. But remember, I've also got the shocks turned all the way down so we can uh, get it out of the uh, enclosed trailer. Which is not optimum. So now we just got to put this little pretty beauty ring on here. She's good a little. to go. She looks pretty. There's another one there. Listen, so these are just little 
automotive pop rivets, guys, nothing big. Done. Clear. So now we'll do Time. Time. <laughs> yeah. Off of our good friend AVE. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with him. Not, check him out on YouTube. Love his videos. He tears apart all kinds of great things and they'll let you know if they're worth buying or not. So, yeah, AVE. Good guy. You can see it real nice out there, too. You got a tape measure? We're running. Wow, only about 12 and a half inches with the shocks there. I think we get up to like almost 14 and a half with them turned up. So, eh, maybe 12, 12 and a quarter. Ground clearance. Oh, yeah, out here we're shooting up to 14 and a half. So, even with everything up, we should be fine. With the snow, the actual frame, get about nine inches of clearance off the ground from the frame here. And of course, you know, you guys, yeah, it's like multiple sections. That's the only. Forty-five, does it? That's the only bad thing, eh? Is yeah. you got to do it by hand. Yeah. But it still looks like even at this, the seventy-two inch is just enough to you know cover your uh, cover your track line. Might be shy just a touch, but even on the inside, it looks fine. That just means you get to play in it some more and make extra swipes. There you go. <laughs> I need to do a recess paint on that can in with yellow. Doesn't that look nice, painted in there? You hearing this can-am? Yeah. Step it up, guys. That should be yellow or something. One of your colors. We took our old trailer and made them your colors, so at least you could do is fill in the can-am. Well, awesome, guys. I think uh, this is a successful run, and um, it's going to work good for us this year. Possibly coming up, uh, we're going to be doing, I think, a uh, plow install, or at least a plow overview for a cow um, so we'll try to get that to you guys if anybody's interested and then um, possibly one for the uh, Honda, what's the Honda? I forget what uh, so the, the style he has. Uh, for our buddy Len, so we'll probably do a, a video on that too, just so you guys can kind of see all around uh, what it takes to put one on the side by side. So with that being said, I think we're good to go guys. Thanks for watching us and uh, soon we'll do a video uh, we're gonna, uh, do a name change soon um, for uh, a lot of reasons. Uh, we're going to be sponsoring a new driver on uh, Cold Friday. Uh, he's going to be racing in the best in the desert and score racing along with uh, doing like loft elite jumps. Uh, he's uh, he holds a couple records for jumping right now. So for reasons of sponsorship and uh, for our channel growing, we want to step away from the, um, the, def the trademark Defender X of our name. Uh, we're still going to stay true to the Defender, but uh, we plan on um, uh, changing our name to Michigan Mudmasters. Uh, we've got the company set up, so you probably see it as the, the banner on top of our uh, page. But probably within the next week, uh, I'll sit down and I'll talk with you guys about it and uh, make sure everybody's on board because I don't want to lose any of our subscribers. They mean a lot to us. That's why we're here doing this is for you guys. So um, I'll post that up. We'll have a discussion about it. And then shortly after, you'll see us as Michigan Buttmasters if uh, we have no problems. So thanks again, guys, for watching. We appreciate it. Uh, yeah, just tool. So we'll drop her down. Then you should be able to... There you go, guys. That easy. You want to your hook? Up. Oh. <laughs> That's the light. <laughs> just blind that. So it's that easy, guys. I mean, yeah, I couldn't ask for a better setup. I know a lot of them you have to put pins in the back every time you load them and unload them. So ultimately, in the winter, I'll pull this in, of course, drop the plow so I can use it in and out, and then I uh, grip.